for 18 years. I have been the queen of this ring. I am the most dedicated. I am the most athletic wrestler in this ring. And so while other wrestling companies have had their girls wrestling in jello matches 18 years ago, what was I doing? I was jumping off of 25 foot ladders. And while your girls back there in the locker room were playing in their play pens, what was I doing? Unexpected things and elevating women's wrestling. So you fans think you can do what I do? I get up at dawn and I train my body and I train my mind. So while you guys are sitting on your couches, eating your french fries and playing on your phones, while I've already finished my day, you haven't even had your morning coffee. So you know what? You know what? I think I've proven myself time and time again. So Beast, if you're so big and strong, then prove it. You know, and we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. And it is for the WWE Championship. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Welcome to the Rights and Wrongs and Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is your host, Mr. Green, and we are about to review the fourth episode. And wow, Women of Wrestling on Access TV. Uh, what can we say? You know, I, I think it's pretty solid that we have the formula now. We start off with the uh, show recap, which basically leads to the show open, and then it lo- rolls itself over to a, a opening interview of some sort. And this was no different. While episode four did a recap of the main event scene over the last three shows. And you know, and I will point this out as I'm going on. The voiceover guy sounds a lot like David McClain. Now, I don't know that that is him. It would seem kind of weird. <laughs> I would think that he's voicing over his own thing and uh Speaking of himself in third person, but it really sounds like David McClain when I when I'm listening to like hmm, you can you know, I'm sure you can find somebody else to do that even even if you go on Fiverr you can find somebody to just do a voiceover for you I mean it's L A for Christ's sake you can just walk down the street and say hey you want to do a voiceover for me sure you know there's, there's, there's plenty of people out there that's looking to be working anyhow <laughs> so it. That, that's not the hero there. So we go off and we got the opening segment, and it is Jungle Girl. She is uh, coming out, and she gives maybe the most real promo that I've heard her do in in wow. Basically talking about what she has done in wow and uh, <clears throat> how uh, her status versus the status of some of the people in the back and some of the people in the audience. Now, let's clarify, I understand that some of these things that she's saying, you know, uh, in in terms of, you know, what I meant to wrestling, that becomes debatable because, you know, she she had her time in, she, she stepped away, she came back, and it was a lengthy hiatus. But 
Here's where she did right. The way she worded it made all the difference in the world. Just like I have been carrying on, if you listen to the previous podcast, you heard me go on about, I wish they would stop promoting her like she hadn't been beaten in 18 years and all that stuff like that. <laughs> there is, you know, she did allude to those things, but she, she managed to word these, her complaints and her grievances in such a way, and quite frankly, the her delivery of it came off in such a way that it was like, okay, I can buy this. Which is a lot of what people complain about with wrestlers in other promotions. Like, it sounds too scripted. It sounds like they wrote it out. It sounds like this, that, and the other. And uh, if if this was scripted, she did an excellent job. That, that's the first thing I'd have to say. If, if they sat down and wrote this out, she did an excellent job with it. It felt to me like, hey, Jungle Girl, go out there and... You know, give a good reason why you have this kind of beef. And she just, okay, fine. And she went out there and did it. She found something that that ticked her off enough to make her want to go out there and be like, look, I've been doing this while, you know, half of these girls were still sitting around playing with Barbies and, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. You know, I was, I was inside a wild ring while other companies were doing mud matches and, jello matches i was jumping off of a 20 some foot ladder which is true i mean now we know which company she's talking about there, there's no doubt that, that we know which company she's talking about she you know that that's a clear on shot to what the industry was at the time and again it, these are kind of undeniable she she in wow even though it didn't go as far as it should have <clears throat> That, that ladder match that she's talking about at the pay-per-view, you know, that, that took place while places like the WWE was still doing pillow fights and, you know, bikini matches, mud matches, stuff like that. That You know, so that, there was a real sense of reality built around the words that she was saying and the conviction that she said it with just sold it. And she also, you know, you know, they don't talk about it all that much but she did have her stint and I, I always kind of praise her for this she had her stint on the independent circuit she doesn't she didn't get a lot of recognition for the time that she had out there because it, it was relatively brief but she was there at a time where Sarah Del Rey was just getting started I think she had her cross she crossed paths with Ivory briefly she I know she crossed paths with China uh, when when China left the WWE and she uh, made a stop through UP uh, UPW I believe was the name of the promotion. She was in the locker room with guys like The Miz when they were just kicking off and John Cena and Samoa Joe and Christopher Daniels. So you know, and she has admitted you know, and this is not a knock on Wilds. Like when I initially got trained, I learned the moves. When I came here, I, I learned the how and the why. You know here being the independent circuit she learned what she was doing it for and it shows so all of those things i think is like for her it, it's seemingly like riding a bike and it just comes back and she's good at it i think she's probably better at that she gives us than she gives herself credit for uh which reminds me there's a a, a partial question about that a little later on and i'll, I'll get that in, in the show so uh <sighs> As she's doing this, the, I guess the same routine happens with the the old interview with David McClain at the beginning of the show. Uh, after she's finished talks, talking about her history, she calls out the Beast. And the Beast has no problem coming out there. She comes on out, She and much like she always does, has an impressive frame when she walks. And they you know they get at it, and the referees and everybody coming in to break the to break it up. David McClain shouting, and he said, "All right, tonight you two going in the main event, and blah blah blah." So that it sets it up. What I left out of this opening segment with was, "Is this a heel promo?" I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit because during the course of it, of segments later on. The announcers, Stephen Dickey, Dave McClain, they're having this discussion like, did she turn and, you know, stuff like, you know, they're, they're openly talking about it. But they're talking about it in such a way that it fits. So it's not like they're speaking outside of uh, wrestling lingo. In the kayfabe universe of WOW, 
they're talking, you know, as if, well, you know, this was in her all along and she wants the title back and so on and so forth. Uh, I don't know where they're going with that story. My personal opinion is that she, there is no turn here. I, I, that, that's my personal opinion. Very aggressive, yes. And it was, was it a heel promo? Yes, it was a heel promo. But do I think that she has turned out and out? I think she's uh, doing somewhat of an anti hero stance where she's a shade of gray. Wow has lots of shades of gray. Now that I really think about it, but <clears throat> we'll get into that a little bit later on also because it, there, there's another portion of that that pops right back up. But this segment ends with a big brawl. <clears throat> the officials are breaking them up. The main event match is announced and is made. So we know what we're heading towards. Uh, the formula is the same, folks. <laughs> this, this, is, this is how Wild kicks off. I expected to do the same thing next week. All right, so we go to the second segment, which is Fury versus Fire. If you're in the independent world and you're watching these two, that you would be looking at Harlow O'Hara versus Kira Hogan. <clears throat> but in the Wild Universe, it's Fury and Fire. Fury, of course, being Harlow, Fire being Kira. Fury comes out with the rest of the Psycho Sisters, um, Mesmera and, and Razor, I believe. Uh, and before we go into this, Last week, and I had to go back and check my notes. I was positive that they had a promo saying that and next week, folks, Mesmer makes her debut, and she didn't do anything. I mean, they, this is the first time I've seen Wild advertise something that they didn't deliver on, and given the fact that this is all pre-taped and edited down, I, I, I can't imagine why they would do that. It didn't, didn't make a lot of sense to me. It's like, why... <laughs> Why advertise something that you are not going to deliver? I mean, it, it might have been just a, a case of quality control. Maybe it slipped past somebody in the editing booth. Maybe they just said, nobody's going to know it. Nobody's going to remember it. Just run it anyway. But I, I, I don't understand what was the point of having this video package introducing Mesmer a week ago, advertising her for next week's show. I mean, that because this, that's what it was. It was promotion. It's promotion, advertising, getting people ready. Hey, she's going to make her debut next week, and she doesn't do it. So I, I, I don't understand it. Uh, anyhow, it, 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 we're, we're back to the established Psycho Sisters here. We're, we're Fury and Fire, which it was a good match. Now, I don't know whether the two of them have ever actually crossed paths out on the independent circuit. By this time, I would imagine that they could have i mean it's very likely they're both out of atlanta georgia okay so <clears throat> even if they didn't do a match here they could have crossed paths any number of places because they pretty much run the same circle they you know they, they head up into the northeast they go to the carolinas that they, uh they, they've run ladies night in texas the queens of combat and so on and so forth uh, women's wrestling, women's revolution wrestling. You know, it's it's a lot of places that they they're generally booked on the same show. But I don't know if they've ever been booked against each other. Here, they have been booked against each other. And even if we're going to count what they did outside of, it's the first time that quote unquote Fire and Fury have done it. So, I guess you know we'll we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, <clears throat> the match is is a very solid match, as which what I would expect out of the both of them, having seen them both work live and on tape, tape, and in video. You know, I've seen them do their, their whole thing. Um, it was a pretty even exchange between the two, except when Fire counters out of a what would have been a head scissors into a backbreaker, I guess, illustrating that show of strength. Uh, she does a superplex on Fire. Um, of course, you got the Psycho Sisters running around ringside, distracting, cheating, you know, trying to give aid to uh, Fury where necessary. Not too much of it, but it's there, uh, which which you would expect. You know, that that's what they're supposed to do. That I, I expect if they're coming out in this three-person unit, they, they did what they should be doing as heels and, you know, uh, getting getting themselves involved, trying to get, you know, trying to get their person to win. <clears throat> but didn't work here. Fire wins. Uh, they, they were both looking for their, their finishing maneuver. I don't know what she calls it in, in WoW. I know she 
used to call it face to music is basically like a, a cradle neck breaker. She pops that, hooks the bridge. One, two, three, five, wins it. And <clears throat> like I said, good match, but she did the baby face thing. She stood in the ring just a little too long, celebrating the victory. And what does that do? That brings in the Psycho Sisters. They, Mesmer and Razor both jump in and attack her. And they're all three of them now beating her up after the match. And who should come in for the save but Adrenaline, who we uh, some people know as Diamante from LAX back in the day when she was on Impact. Well, yeah, I think she, she still uses the name now as an uh, as independent worker. So Adrenaline comes out, comes for the save, runs off uh, the Psycho Sisters. And now as she's uh, picking her up, helping her to her feet, you know, Fire thanks her for the save, and Dave McClain appears in the ring. Because <laughs> I don't even think the cameras caught him walking in. It just like he magically appeared. Maybe, maybe I missed it. But uh, so, but he's there all of a sudden, and he's like, hey, you know, girls, you know, she saved you. What do you say? And blah, blah, blah. And you know, he, he does that. And uh, Adrenaline basically tells, hey, you know, you know I got your back. And, and – they come out like, well, you want to make the announcement? Or, and here we are. I was like, yeah, we're, we're going for the, the tag team titles. We're, we're, we're entering ourselves into the tournament, which is great. And, uh, and I was not surprised by this at all, given their uh, uh, relationship outside of WoW, I guess you'd put it that way. So <clears throat> it wasn't shocking to me that a drilling and fire tagged up. I mean, it matches up in name almost a drilling and fire, the kind of high energy items. So it, it is a uh, a new team being entered into the the tag team tournament, which is ongoing. And I still don't necessarily understand the hows of how you can enter into a tournament while the tournament is taking place. But it's Wild's rules, so they can do as they choose to do. Uh, there was a tag team match that took place later on in the show, and, and after I get to that, we'll we'll kind of go through some of the the uh, participants because remember, as I've said before, they have not announced any brackets in Wild. Wow. They have, they haven't said any. They haven't announced any team. They haven't showed any brackets. They didn't, they didn't say the number of people that's allowed to enter or how big the tournament is. It's just open air. It, it, it's just open, and, you know, you can kind of take it and leave it. And I, I'm assuming they don't want to paint themselves into a corner because I remember the first time they did a tournament way back in the day in 2000, and I tried my best to, like, how is this tournament working out? Because bracket-wise, I'm like, this doesn't fit. There's no way that this person should have been going against this person and th these two teams shouldn't have never met and stuff like that. It's like it's uneven. It doesn't work. So um, I'm assuming for reasons such as that, it's just better that they, they probably felt like, well, you know, it's better that we don't announce it because that way it gives us a way out or, or something along those lines. But uh, I'm not an overall super sports guy, but I at least like to know the bracket. I at least like knowing, okay, who's in this thing? Who can I – actually look at and say that's my pick you can't even do that because we don't know who's in it you know at least not in total so uh that that's just a side note that's just one of those in my opinion deals <clears throat> so here we go the next segment we got siren and holiday which uh you know takes place in the vignette this is a um very well done, very well done vignette. The, the vignettes, the backstage promos, the videos, the things that they produce are all generally very well produced. And there's you know, no exception here. Uh, Siren does a fantastic job of uh, putting out the tarot cards. She's got like this spooky rhyme going on. And basically the point of this is her explaining the assault that she and the, the, the assault slash kidnapping that she and Holiday performed on Princess Ozzy. Everything here was fine. I mean, if, if we're just looking at it for the case of a, um, a little bit of showbiz, I guess if you want to call that, this is the point of the show where you just kind of suspend your disbelief a little bit, folks. 
You just got to kind of go with it and just, just take it for what it is. And this is the concession to showbiz here where she's doing the tarot cards and talking about, you know, the, the strength of the bamboo sticks. But what, what won't be broken will certainly be burned, which I actually did enjoy that line. Uh, I don't know if she wrote it herself, but it was, it was a good line. Um, <clears throat> the CGI fire that they put on the uh, Princess Ozzy version of this vignette, however, was terrible. <laughs> I thought, you know, was, I don't know what their budget is. I just assumed, I was like, come on, I think y'all could do it just a little bit better with the fire there. I mean, but they may not have wanted to actually burn it. That might be the only set of bamboo sticks they got. I don't I don't know the reasons why, but, yeah, it, it just, for, for what WoW is and for what everything I've seen out of WoW up until this point, the CGI fire just didn't seem to fit the uh, <laughs> what was going on there. So I was I was a little bit shocked about that, but overall, overall, if if you just if you remove the CGI fire from your mind, if you if you watched that and you looked at it like okay, if you could get past that, then it was it was fine overall. Didn't explain much clearly, but but, but it was fine. I mean, I, I I looked at it, I was like okay, that's right. I I I liked what Siren, aka Nina Monet, was doing. I, you know, I enjoyed her her little chanting or like I said, her spooky rhyme. But as far as explaining to me what happened to Princess Ozzy and why we took her, uh, I didn't get that. Maybe you did. And if you did, you know, leave it, you know, somewhere in the, the comment section below or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> so this opens up for the next segment, which is a match. And we have Siren, the voodoo doll, versus Chantilla Chelly. I, I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. But if you know her as Ray Lynn, that's who that is. Uh, the first thing that I noticed that I g gave praise for is that she didn't have a, a stupid baby face syndrome. Chantilla comes out after Holiday and Siren. Well, after Siren, who's accompanied to the ring by Holiday. And she immediately recognizes, like, oh, wait a minute. You know, it's two of them out here. No, I'm not going to do that. You know, she, she didn't even walk to the ring. She walks behind the barricade to where the commentator's table is and goes directly to David McClain. Like, hey, look, there's two of them out there. I'll be right back. So she goes back, comes back out, and her tag team partner, Sassy Massey, Alicia Edwards, is on her back, and she's carrying her to the ring, you know, to get a nice little pop out of the crowd. And uh, so now, in theory, we have Sassy Massey to counteract everything that's going on with Holiday on the other side. And I say in theory because if you watch this match, you know that that didn't happen at all. The, the match was good. Uh, and, and here again, I do not think that you could put these two people in the ring. For that matter, Fury and Fire, Siren and Chantilla Chelly. You know, I don't think you could put the experienced workers of WoW in the ring up against each other and get a bad match. It just, you know, like they'd have to purposely just do ridiculous stuff in order for that to stink. I don't think it's in them. I don't I don't think they're capable of, of making this thing just, you know, a, a stinker. They, they, they're, they're too good for that. I've seen Ray Lynn on video. I've seen Nina Monet uh, in person. I've seen her for a while in person. In fact, she's on this channel. You can go to some of her earlier matches. And let me just say right now, if you go and watch some of those earlier matches of her, the change in her is, dr is extremely drastic. Seeing her on screen now and seeing her from videos that I have produced with her is, is night and day. It is... It's almost akin to the change between uh, collegiate wrestler Scott Steiner versus Big Papa Pump. They're almost like two different people. Uh, you know, um, I, I, Papa Shango and the Godfather, that's probably more appropriate, you know, but in reverse. It, it's just to see them is, is like, are you sure they're the same person? Like everything about the way she carries herself, her look, her hair, you know, the, you know, all all of just top to bottom, she she has changed it 
dramatically, and, and she's thrown herself into who Siren is. Now, granted, there's a version of Siren that exists on the independent circuit. She doesn't go by that, but it's still relative. It's you know, it's kind of it's similar in concept. Um, so I just, so again, I mean, it it only goes back to reinforce what I was saying before is that I think it's very difficult for her not to be good at it because even when she's not being Siren. She's being siren, you know. She she just she has a different partner <coughs> outside of Wow. On Wow, Holiday is her partner. On the independent circuit, she has Ravana Sin, who you know people should probably keep an eye out for. She she's great. If she if she wasn't so dark, she probably would be in Wow. Quite frankly. Um. So anyway, we have the match. Good good showing between the two of them. Despite the fact that Sassy Mass is out there, Holiday still manages to cheat. And not just manages to cheat, but she manages to cheat on several occasions. So, go figure. I mean, it was a good plan, and it seemed like a good idea when she came out there with her, but, but she's still, Holiday is still doing what she's doing. Uh, Chella does a great kick combo uh, to uh, Siren in, in there. <clears throat> She hits a Coachella cutter, is what she calls it. I mean, I of course, you know, back we called it an RKO or diamond cutter. If you, you know, I'm dating myself by saying a diamond cutter, but still, that's what we called it. Even though, and it was a beautiful hit. She hit it with the cutter, drops her, goes for the the pin, but again, Holiday intervenes. She's distracted the referee. So even though she's she's got a clear pinfall over her opponent, Chella is uh, not getting the pin the referee is distracted sassy master goes around to get holiday off and you know kind of walk her away but in doing that <clears throat> siren gets the win with the voodoo driver just you know catches her unaware picks up pops her bam one two three and despite her best efforts to counteract holiday it didn't didn't matter in the end siren comes out on top we uh, go to the next segment, which is a video package. Lana Starr, Amber O'Neill. It, it, it is ex- explaining Lana Starr from mm, almost from start to finish. They didn't go into a lot of her old footage, but they did bring up the fact that, and again, I'll say it one more time. I'm paraphrasing. They brought up the fact that Lana Starr is a user, and she has managed to uh get some people to do her bidding or, you know, convince them of all the best that she could do for them as long as you work with me and this, that, and the other. And, and they said the story that Amber was was another in a list of people that have fallen into the, into the same trap, so to speak. Uh, if we go back into the history of Lana Starr, uh, you would look at the first incarnation of WoW, you would say that... Um, uh, was it, it, there was a cheerleader and and her name just dropped out of my head. Uh, Pat Patty Pip. Okay, she was part of a tag team. Lana Star broke up the tag team, kind of like what she did with Amber here. She broke up the tag team and she got Patty Pip and and rechristened her Patty Pizzazz. That was her first um, real uh, assistant, so to speak. Um, the next one was uh, Kitty Meow. <clears throat> when when. Uh, Wow came back. She had her her new girl, and and that was the one. Even though I don't think Kitty, she didn't walk into it as a uh, as a baby face. She just was kind of off camera, built into being a uh, assistant to to Lana. Um, <clears throat> and then of course we get to Amber O'Neill, and they go through the whole recap and how Lana acquired the services of Sofia Lopez, and and they you know worked out this deal and they, they got Amber O'Neill to turn on her then partner Santana Garrett, who you can now see on Wednesday nights on NXT. Um and and basically they forfeited the tag team titles to Cage Heat, which really they, we shouldn't even be having a tag team tournament. But they but uh, but no that's not true. I, I tell a lie. Uh because I forgot at the end of that show because of the way that they won the, the titles were held uh, were vacated they were they were held up and then they said oh, we'll we'll have a tag team tournament and that was years ago 
So we're now we're just not getting to the tag team tournament. But uh, <clears throat> that was the recap for all of that and setting up why we're at this point. And Amber O'Neill being uh, kind of resurrected, so to speak, by her friend Jesse Jones, who some of y'all may know as Jesse Bell Smothers. So it, it was a great video recap. I mean, in the in the time that they had available to them, I thought they did a good job of kind of condensing the storyline down to where you can understand it. Yes, they could have gone into a deep dive if they wanted to, but, I mean, it's TV, and you, you only got so much time in TV. Next segment was another match, just the third match of the night, which was uh, one I was, I was actually looking forward to because it is a tag team match, and it, and it's a quick turnaround story. Uh, it started last week, I, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think with, with, when she got turned. No, no, sorry. Show before last. This is where we, we start the story of uh, Amber O'Neill being the Beverly Hills baby being turned on. So now we're coming to a point where there's almost a little bit of a payoff here. And you got Lana Starr and her new uh, assistant or, or her new protege. That's probably a better way to put it. Faith the Lioness. So we know now that Faith the Lioness has turned heel. She's under the, the sway of Lana Starr. And they are taking on Jesse Jones and Amber O'Neill. And this is in the brackets for the tag team tournament. So we finally get to know some of the teams that's in the tournament. So before we go into the review for that, let's, let's look back at some of the, the teams that have existed in it thus far. I just announced Line of Star, the fabulous Line of Star, Faith the Lioness, who were taking on Jesse Jones and Amber O'Neill. Uh, th- they made the announcement following this that the Dixie Darlings, who we have not seen on TV yet, you can see video of them on their uh, their WOW Facebook page. We'll be taking on the Monsters of Madness, and that'll be Hazard and uh, Havoc, which I figured, I was like, yeah, they're probably going to be in the tournament anyway. I mean, they are tag team. Give me break. Uh, Siren and Holiday, we, which we already know, have advanced over the Bully Busters with Keita Rush and, and Steffi Slade. So the, the reunion of the Bully Busters is very short-lived. It looks like they're, they've gone back onto their own path. Uh, Chantilla Chelly and Sassy Massey defeated Abilene Maverick and the Disciplinarian. So we we see those two teams and uh, Chelly and Massey advanced. <clears throat> we, we've we already heard the announcement of Drilling the Fire. We don't know who they're taking on. And the uh, Psycho Sisters, two, two-thirds of the Psycho Sisters, because, again, Mesmera, despite being advertised to debut, has not wrestled. So Razor and Fury took on and won against Princess Ozzy and Reina Reyes. So <clears throat> they they have uh, uh, the the bulk of the teams I would imagine that, that are going to be in the um, the tournament. As far as who else is going to be in it, I mean, who knows? Um, unfortunately, it doesn't appear like Cage Heat no longer has a place in the Wild Universe, and. Um, that's a little sad because, again, you know, much like some of the other girls that have been there from the get-go, I, I thought that they would have at least a another run or, you know, something along those lines. But I, I believe I, I talked about it in another forum, if not the last podcast. I know that it is somewhat difficult for Cage Heat to work as a team because both of them are, you know, they're not in the same city. Now, granted – when they want to fly somebody in, they being wild, they, they'll do it. But um, uh, I, I, I think one half of that team that have been uh, dealt a lot of pain is is somewhat occupied. So it, uh, unfortunately, it leaves uh, her partner, Loka, in a lurch because you can't be cage heat when there's only one of you. So, uh, which may also explain why – Sophia Lopez has kind of morphed over into managing other people, opposed to the team that she was originally associated with. So as far as while lore goes, she has managed the most people within the company, having had caged heat. And uh, I think she she had a brief kind of one-off with Lana Starr. Uh, certainly she managed Serpentine and, and Nikki Crump, and so she, she's just kind of making the rounds here. Uh, the next question would be, like, who who else is left? Who who else is left for them to utilize if they 
want to round out this tournament. How many more people are they going to throw into it? Uh, we haven't seen Chloe Hertz yet. Uh, I just brought up who works under the Sofia Lopez, Nikki Krumpus, and um, Serp- Serpentine. I mean, they potentially could be a team. <clears throat> they, they they might be you know in there. The vengeful vixens haven't haven't seen the light of day as a tag team yet. And uh, wow, so that would be Dagger and Temptress. So I mean, uh, as far as I know, I mean those are the only ones that I can think of. I mean they may they may have some other people. I mean just like the Dixie Darlings, they may have some people who just never been on TV yet that they're just gonna throw up out of nowhere. So. Who knows? But anyway, uh, <clears throat> back to the the match at hand. Back to review of the match. This is the first match where Lana Star is reinstated, and she heard her announcement when she turned on the bullet. I mean, the uh, Beverly Hills Babe from from the get go is that I'm reinstated. I'm entering into the tag team tournament. And she announced her new partner being Faith the Linus, and this is. Her first match back in the official sense. In the re- sense of reality, it was nothing. She was, this match was a glorified handicap match. Um, it was, first off, it was a heel versus heel combination. I, I was, I, I guess there was really no way that you could get around it because of how they set the story in place because it's Jesse Jones that took uh Amber O'Neill in and, and brought it back, and Jesse had been working as a heel. She was clearly working as a heel coming back out there. Uh, Lana Star doing healer stuff. So it's not <laughs> – they, they didn't change anything. Nobody suddenly became endearing to the fans and stuff like that. It was, This was a clear heel versus heel match. I guess by default, if you were going to take a, a, uh, a baby face out of it, by default it would be – the Jesse Jones Amber O'Neill uh, combination because just just because of how Lana Star had publicly treated Amber O'Neill in the video package leading into it, so you have this and you have um, Jesse Jones Amber O'Neill taking on Faith and they are you know it, it, they're doing good in, in that they're in and out and they're tagging back and forth. They, you know Faith, Faith looks good. Um, I, I saw her wrestle at least twice before I know once at the, the, the Comic Con and then on the show. So she she's she's not polished. She's of course she can't be as polished as her opponents are in this match because they've been doing it for a long time and they're really good at it. But uh she she held up her end of the bargain. Although be it, I'm pretty sure if you put Jesse Bell in, in the ring with a broom, she could probably have a good match with it at this at this stage. Uh, so again, glorified handicap match, and uh, Faith is trying to make a tag. At least at two points in the match, she's she's going over there to get a tag from a tag team partner. Uh, and basically, first off, uh, Amber and Jesse punk Lana out. So whenever they go over to it, because Lana would do little things, but once they turn towards Lana, Lana kind of runs away from it, just jumps down off the apron pulls herself away from the ropes, things like that. And when Faith wants that tag, she essentially refuses. She she just, again, pulls back as far away as she can while still being on the apron and kind of pantomimes, like, get back in there. Go ahead. Go, go, go. You're fine. So <laughs> that is why I say it's a glorified handicap match. So if I was the guest, I'm like, well, whatever injury that she had, and this smoke and mirror match does not instill in me that she's actually capable of wrestling. She's probably still hurt. Um, so we have that. At the end of the match, after getting beaten up repeatedly by both Amber O'Neill and Jesse Bell, uh, Jesse Bell, Jesse Jones, and let, let's be clear, she is now Amber O'Neill again. She is not the Beverly Hills babe any longer. She changed her whole look to fit kind of the uh, – the motif of Jesse Jones has got the Daisy Dukes and the <clears throat> the checkered shirt and all that, and the boots and bandanas and all that stuff like that. So she's back in a tag team, and she, she's pairing off with her friend, somebody that she's kind of did the, the indie circuit with, which, which is cool. And uh, Jesse, who is, I guess, the, the, the front runner of the team, shows... Let me let me rewind this a little bit. 
so I can get, uh, paint a clear picture. Faith Alliance gets free, and she's trying to do one last tag. Lana turns her back on Faith and essentially is just kind of not parading around, but just, you know, smiling and, and jaw jacking with the fans, like, I'm not getting in there, and, you know, that type of thing. If Faith is dejected on the inside of the ring, but Jesse, who's the legal woman on the other side, comes in and shoves Faith into Lana to where the tag is forcibly made. Now Lana's the legal person. Jesse grabs her by the hair, throws Lana into the ring, pushes her down on the match, and locks in the arm bar that she's been using to win her matches, where she's, you know, in essence, I guess, in story, you know, dislocating arms and breaking them and whatnot. So as soon as she's down there and she locks it in, and I believe she calls it the bourbon stretch, Lana's tapping out like crazy. So for the five seconds that Lana Starr was an active wrestler again, she <laughs> immediately tapped out and lost the match. The winners, Jesse Jones, Amber O'Neill, and they advance in the tag team tournament. Uh, Jesse gets on the microphone at the end, explains, you know, that they are going after the goal, and she's still using her little catchphrase over there, and the we, and, you know, now she's speaking in in terms of we and us instead of just me and I. Uh, so so we, we understand the team. We are going to make wrestling great again. So, you know, she, she's still doing that whole thing. So, so despite the fact that there is a comeuppance to Lana Starr as being one of the primary heels in WoW, we have a, uh, uh, a heel moment still, and they establish that they have not changed right there at the end, which is great. I don't think Jesse Jones or Jesse Bell Smothers gets a lot of credit. You know, I just want to take a moment to to talk about uh, Smothers here for a minute, and and I identify as, as Jesse Bell Smothers, but I, I, she doesn't. You know, she's one of those second generation girls that just doesn't get a lot of credit for for what she has done and how long she's done it in the wrestling business. You got people like. Tessa Blanchard, who's a third generation girl, you got uh, uh, Charlotte and 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 uh, WWE, who's you know both of which are fantastic wrestlers, and I'm certainly not trying to knock them, but Jesse Bell Smothers does not get nearly the credit that she deserves for being a good wrestler, you know, being beyond good, really. I mean, she she's fantastic in what she does, and I think because. She limits the flash, and she does a very uh, a methodical pace, somewhat hard hitting. She she does work a southern wrestling style a lot, you know. And because of that, and because it's not as flashy as as some others, I think that she she gets overlooked quite often. And and that and the fact that you know she she is second generation, but uh, Tracy Smothers' biggest runs as a single probably were in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. But if you if you haven't seen Tracy Smothers as a single baby face in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, you should go back and watch it in most of the well I'm not I think all of the episodes somebody uploaded on the YouTube. So you don't even need the, the WWE network and I, I probably shouldn't say it because I don't want it to go away. I love that channel. Uh <clears throat> so you can look up all of those things and and see how good this guy really was. And clearly a lot of that has been passed on, you know, taught her, you know, the basics of how this thing works. And she upholds that to this day. Uh, now, bear in mind, if you're going to go back and watch that, just get past the, the – you're going to have to get past the rebel flag thing because that was, what, 93, 94, and, and uh, the world hadn't advanced itself enough to where we would openly say, hey, look, you know, we shouldn't be praying that flag around, you know. Uh, I, I I just get, you know, I, I take it for what it is. I understand that it was the era that is in. But if, you, if you're if you looking to see her her genetics and where she, where she gets it from, go back and look at that. Now, yes, it's not women's wrestling, I understand. But if, you, but if you're a fan of wrestling in general, uh, some of those Tracy Smells matches, you should go back and watch. He, he, was, he was a good baby face for the area that he was in. And it may be the best stuff that he did as a singles uh, wrestler. And Jesse Bell Smothers is as good as anybody else. And she, I would like to see Jesse get at least one 
championship match in WoW uh, before her run in WoW is done. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm certain that she's going to be there as long as she wants to be. But as long as she's actively wrestling, I'd, I'd like to see it get get that shot. You know, get in the ring in there. But it's good that she and uh, O'Neal have uh, advanced. Uh, and, it, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to say, you know, who's going to win this thing. Uh, I, I, you know, I really need to reach out to Cage Heat and, and uh, see if I get to talk to him about uh, how they feel about this tournament taking place and not being in it. <laughs> really. Uh, but anyway, we, we move on. The next segment sets up the main event of the show. It's a video package for Jungle Girl and the Beast. And does as good a job as any and as setting up the parallels between the two. I say this every episode. Jungle Girl is a genetic marvel. And she is. Uh, the Beast is phenomenally stacked. She's, she's a, a mass of muscles. And um, despite that, because when you first see The Beast, I remember seeing her first last season. When you first see The Beast, she's unlike most, I would say 90% of the women that's on that roster. But even despite that, I mean, and, and, and she's still different than 90% of the women on that roster. Jungle Girl somehow looks as if she could put her in jeopardy. And that's what this match was about. It was about putting the beast in jeopardy. Now, here's one of those shades of gray again. But I guess you can kind of chalk this up to, you know, it's, it's turned personal. It's a feud now. Because the second the beast gets into the ring, before that bell rings, she charges across and spears Jungle Girl right to the mat. If there's any one thing that I disagree with, and I, you know, this is just my personal preference, but if there's any one thing that I disagree with in terms of what they did in the, in the course of the match is probably the Spears. Like, the Spears have become the equivalent of the DDT in, in WoW, where it's no longer a finish, it's just a high spot. It's, it's something that they do just to, you know, it looks devastating, and it does, you know, especially coming from her, they got the right person to do it with the beast. But given her size and powers, I would like her to do that thing. And and once she hits it, just, just be finished. The match should be done. You know, uh, what what's the line that uh, Josh Matthews says? Spear, no jackhammer needed. That that type of thing. I, I would I would think it would be something along those lines, like the gore or you know uh, the spear from Moose. But it doesn't do that. You know, she she nails her and then she kind of goes down. At it. And a simple tweak would have changed all that. If she had speared her and she just, she being Jungle Girl, just kind of rolled out of the ring in pain and the referees won't let the beast get out there while Jungle Girl's getting her breath back together because, you know, she she got jumped at the bill. I mean, you know, it, I mean, I, I can't even say it was at the, at the start. Well, it was before, really, but just by a second or two. But the, the point being is that she didn't have the option to, uh, avoid it. It was it was coming too fast and before she was prepared. So that might have been a little bit of a heelish thing, but at the same time, like I said, it, there is some uh, reasoning behind it in that there, there's this personal issue that's carried on between the two of them. So she catches them right before the bell, but Junk Girl does recuperate on the outside. Pulls her out, and then we get into this, you know, kind of brawl going on outside the ring. Gets back in, and we got the exchange between the two. Some of the big things that took place in there is that you got a power slam by Jungle Girl onto the Beast, which I was really sh- surprised that she was able to kind of kick her off like that. And here again, this is what this match was about. It was about Jungle Girl putting the beast in jeopardy where she had not been up until this point up until this point i think she had been portrayed as relatively tough and i know faith the lioness in the first one gave her a competitive match and whatnot but she was she wasn't uh viewed in the same light i'll put it that way uh <clears throat> john girl could pops the beast with a drop kick off the cigarette and, and that, that's another big highlight move uh it was hard-hitting, 
and it was methodical. It wasn't, wasn't a super fast-paced match, but it's a good match. And if you don't see anything else in there, you should watch watch this and maybe the tag team match. Those those two matches, I think, make the episode. Um, so we, ha- we have uh, the Beast trying to turn this thing around. Jung Girl's in the corner. She's at, at the, the uh, turnbuckle. And the Beast is lining up for a spear. Lined up for spear number two. So she charges in, but she catches the turnbuckle because Jung Girl moves. So now Jung Girl has a target. She goes outside, wraps her arm around the post, I think twice. You know, it goes in, attacks the arm, uh, hits her with a belly to belly, hits, punches the arm a couple of more times. Um, she does her own version of a spear and takes down the beast, which I was fine with because that's not her move. You know, that I was like, that's not Joan Girl's move. So she, you know, it was portrayed as she's just doing it, kind of rubbed the, the salt in the wounds of the beast. Like, I can. You know, I could do that too. And that was another narrative of the match. Anything you can do, I can do. You know, between the two of them because that there's you know, they portrayed it as competitive. And, you know, rewinding back to that video package, you would see them doing the ropes in the workouts. You would see them lifting the tire, you would see them doing the hammer on the tire. And all you know, all these things that still showed you if you can do it, I can do it. So I like that, you know, I like that. I did like the story that they they put out there. I thought it was, I thought in terms of commentary, in terms of the storytelling in the ring, uh, I thought it was it was very complete, quite frankly. And and I I know I don't even really say that about uh, wow all that often, but here I I think it felt very complete to me. But after the spear that Jung Girl nails the beast with, she hits with a jungle driver, which is usually the setup for her coming off of the top rope. That is, you know, that is the Jungle Girl finish, the big splash from the top rope. So she goes up, she gets on the top rope, she does her perch maneuver, but as she's doing that, the beast pops back up and gets over to where, like, the, the old Ric Flair throw where the, where the baby face would grab Flair and just toss him across the ring. But that's what we got here with the beast. She gets over underneath Jungle Girl, gets her body uh, just under the throat and by the thigh and hurls her across the ring. And Joan Girl looks like she's just in immense pain, which she probably was. <clears throat> and now we've got a, uh, a another spear set up. You can see the look on, on uh, the Beast's face. She, she's lining her up, even though her arm is hurt. Because remember, Jungle Girl had been attacking that arm for a couple of minutes there, wrapping around the post, arm barred, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so... On the other side of the ring, Jungle Girl gets up. The referee walks over. We can see it coming a mile away. The Beast throttles herself across the ring full speed. Jungle Girl gets out of the way. The referee does not, and she plows the referee, and you would believe it. it. I know some people have a hard time believing, like, oh, man, I can't believe that little girl knocked this referee down. But here, you believe this. The Beast is a big woman, strong. Huge biceps, huge upper body, powerful thighs. So if you were to believe anything, you would believe that she has the ability, the strength, the power to run across that ring and knock this dude out, which is exactly what she did. She hits him, and the referee is basically pounced out of the ring onto the floor. So now the match has no ref. Jungle Girl takes advantage, well, not takes advantage of it, but she's still trying to win. She gets a rear waist lock on the beast, pops her over for a German suplex, which she does a great job of a German suplex. I always love it. And she holds it up for the bridge, but there's nobody there to count the match. And now Jungle Girl's irate because, Ruff, you're down. I had a beat. And, and they're saying this on commentary. Jungle Girl had the beast beaten. She just put her down. She held her down for at least the three count, and the beast seemingly could not get up. So even though it was a, a very even flow match and it was, you know, the, the beast was portrayed as a, you know, as just that. She was portrayed as a beast in the in the early stages of it. And Jungle Girl had to work to get the advantage reestablished, but she got it. And she got it to this point. And she got it to the point that, hey, I could have won here. And she had it down. <clears throat> but she, you know, 
had to release the hole because there's no referee there. She's yelling at outside the ring, ref, get up. And seeing that he's not going to get up, she goes back to attack the beast because I can't waste too long, waste too much time before she recovers. But meanwhile, as she's doing that, from outside the ring slides in Tessa Blanchard, who has a Halliburton briefcase, those old steel briefcases. Turns Jungle Girl around, pops her in the head with the with the briefcase, knocks Jungle Girl out. And here we go. You see Tessa looked at the beast and say, you're welcome. And just kind of walks away. And the beast looks like, what's going on here? I didn't ask you for your help. What are you doing? You know, that, that type of thing. So for, what's that? I guess that would be the, the second time. We have a, a non-finish to, to, to the match. I, I know we didn't get one in the triple threat, and I, 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 we didn't get a clear winner in the tag team main event. Nobody got pinned because it was a DQ. And here we don't even have a, a call of the end of the match because there's no referee. It, it went off air before there was anything resolved out of it. So... <laughs> Uh, I I feel kind of two ways about this. One, I don't want too many main events where it's not clear cut. And as I just recapped that, now we've had three main events in a row where there has been no clear cut winner. It's been some kind of chicanery tossed in. Yet, well, excluding the one on one match with Tessa Blanchard versus Serpentine, that was a clear cut winner. But as far as the triple threat match goes, there was no winner there. It got broken up by Hazard. As far as the tag team match between the Monsters of Madness and Jungle Girl and the Beast, there was no clear-cut winner there because they got disqualified, they being the Monsters of Madness. There's no clear-cut winner here because they didn't even announce anything. It's just like, all right, we're done, <laughs> and we're going off there, which I which I, I find that a little strange. So I, I don't enjoy that part of it, but... I will say in the same breath, I did not necessarily not like this. I did I, I didn't find anything wrong with with the uh, with the finish for these reasons. Now I could have done without the previous two. I could have done without those that I just named. But the reason why I feel like I, I like it here, or at least I'm willing to accept it here, is for these reasons. I know that this is a chapter in a larger story. I get that. Because Tessa Blanchard had to make her appearance, so we're still wrapping this into the main event circle. Jungle Girl, Tessa Blanchard, The Beast, possibly Havoc, you know, depending on what they do in the tag team tournament. <clears throat> uh, so I, I get this. This is a marker in, in that regard. But it also does well to keep Jungle Girl safe. I, I know they want to protect The Beast as well. I, I, and I'm fine with that. I'm probably a little less uh, concerned about it as I am with Jungle Girl because I'm still pitching for Jungle Girl to be the legacy wrestler of WoW. She should be the one like what Terry Funk was to ECW. She should be the one, you know, where the, the spirit of WoW is embodied in Jungle Girl. Right or wrong, better or worse, heal a baby face, whatever. She she is one of the few girls that's from that original crop, and she could still go. Amazingly, she could still go. I mean, she she's phenomenal at that. How she's doing it, you know, is is solely based on her endorphasm exercise program. I'm sure. Um, how she wrestles barefoot is still beyond me. I just know that she likes to do it. But uh, I like that it kept her safe even though it knocked her out at the end and she was left laying she wasn't beaten she's already gotten her pin on her you know tessa blanchard already put her down uh and the beast already you know aided in that you know with i think with the, the choke slam and the spear and whatnot but neither one of these ladies were were beaten and that's fine my only thing I wish could have happened as it relates to the matches leading up to this is that there had been some level of definitive winner 
between now and now and then. So he just didn't have out of four main events, only one time somebody gets pinned. I mean, at least in the tag team match that they had last week, Hazard could have took it, taken the pin. They ain't necessarily need to put it on on Havoc if they wanted to keep her main event strong. Just put you know put a tag team partner down, putting let her go in there and take that loss. They didn't they didn't have to have this, and and I and you certainly already knew that I did not like the first one. I did not like that triple threat finish at all because it's a triple threat elimination match. It shouldn't have even been a no contest. Uh but what can you say? You know, that that's neither here nor there. But anyway, it, it, despite all of that, in, in this match, I think it works. I think it works, and I'm willing to go with it. And I will wait until next week to see what the, uh, the next steps are going to be and what's going to be the next chapter in the, uh, in the show or, or in this story. So overall... I, I say it's a, a, a bit of a thumbs up for me. I, I, I'll give it that much. Speaking of thumbs up, last week I, I put up a poll on the uh, YouTube channel and I put up a poll on the uh, Facebook for those who wanted to participate and say, hey, look, if you if you enjoyed the show, express your opinion about it. You can leave your comment or you can leave your, your, your vote. Seems like the vote was the thing to do. Uh on YouTube, actually, it came out at 100%. I'm, I'm a little surprised. Well, no, actually, I'm not. I'm not surprised about the YouTube vote. I'm, everybody voted up. So it was a 100% vote as far as uh, whether people liked or disliked the WOW program last week. That was WOW episode three, uh, <clears throat> which is the review is in the archives here. But you also had the poll up on Facebook was a little bit different and this one was a a bit of a surprise for me because the poll results there was 78% I liked it 22% thought it sucked and that's the way I you know I, it was listed as vote it was great or it sucked I, I'm I am legitimately surprised that 22% of the people that voted in there thought it that didn't like the show now, what I should have asked at that point was, why didn't you like it? Now, you may not want to express that, but but seriously, like, why didn't you like the show? I, I, I am legitimately surprised that that many people, you know, almost a quarter of it, voted that they didn't care for the show. And that poll is still up. Well, the, the poll itself is closed, but it's up. It's still up on Facebook. Uh, so that, that only leaves me to request, I, it's time to put up another poll that it is going to exist in this show. Uh, if you didn't see it at the beginning of the, the video, then you're certainly going to see it now. It is a new poll. What did you think of episode four of wow? Now I've given my, my opinion about it. I thought the episode in and of itself was fine. I am willing to overlook the end. I thought it had more positive than negative, so therefore I'm going to give this a thumbs up out of, you know, from me. But how do you feel about it? What, did you think that the show was worth it? Are they going in the right direction? Do you like the storytelling that they're, that they're doing? Were the matches fine? Did you like the people that were participating in the matches? However you seem to view it, let me know. Vote yes, vote no. I think I'll put the same option up there. The show was great or the show sucked. You know, I know that that might come off a little harsh, but, you know, it, it, it makes the line clear as the clear line in the sand. Yes or no, yay or nay, did you like it or not? Uh, so I'd like to see those results out of you guys. Uh, given next week's program, I will go back over it and we'll talk about um Anybody that's in, well, not anybody, but we'll we'll talk about the uh, the poll results again. Um, and again, I'm really kind of shocked. Uh, I also wanted to address a comment that somebody left for me. I told you if, if you have questions, comments, whatever the case may be, um, you can you can leave them on the uh, the YouTube channel. You can leave them under the podcast if you listen to this, and 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 you can hear this where greater podcasts are sold. You can go to WPN Wrestling and click the link so you can hear the uh, podcast stream directly right to the website, or you can go, you know, iTunes and TuneIn Radio and so on and so forth. Where, wherever you find your podcast, the WPN should be there. Just search out WPN. That's all you got to do. Search out WPN. But um, 
that and you want to send a question to me directly, then you can do it either through Facebook on the Women's Pro Wrestling Network page or you can go Mr. Green. 75 at hotmail.com. That's Mr. Green 75 hotmail.com, and I can get your, your uh, comments and questions directly there. Uh, so, one of them, uh, how am I going to lit lit T L I L T Y 5414 exclamation point. So, I, I Lil T, I'll, I'll, I'll say it Lil T 5414. Um, who apparently has some issues uh, with one of the links on our YouTube channel, so I wanted to address this publicly since he had brought it up. Well, <clears throat> bear in mind that Lil T, you are, are on one of the old uh, videos on our page. Now, for those that are not aware, when the video that he was doing, I, I believe probably WPN Episode 2. So that was a while ago, and this this is uh, probably 2013 or 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And and YouTube operated a little bit different at the time. At that point, um, you put in annotations, and the annotations like I would edit the video, or I would have the video edit, depending on who, who was doing it that day. And we always put in at the end screen a video of what you could do. And then through the annotations, we'd overlay that and uh, it would give you a link to the next video. Well, YouTube does that on their own now. You know, that, so they removed that option and they've just put it as part as the end screens on all YouTube videos. So if, if you have a YouTube channel out there and you're putting on videos and you got a certain amount of videos and you want to, Advertise the next one, or you want to have a, a button to hit subscribe. Which, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please do hit the hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, so you get notified for these things. Um, but YouTube basically took that option away simply because they created a in-house version of it that was, I guess, more uh, up to date and worked a little better. I, I, I'd assume. Well, it, it does work better for me because it's, it's less editing I have to do. So. Um, when you're going back to videos like that, even though it says click left for this video or click right for this video, I am going to apologize because that function has been taken away. You are correct. The link does not work, but that is because of YouTube removing the functionality of that process. That's, that's why you can't do it. Now, since you've done that, I've gone back on that video that you spoke of originally, and I believe, like I said, is uh, WPN episode two, which i um, uh, I think features Cindy Rogers and a was it dog heart? No, it's Cindy Rogers in a one on one match with Allison Danger, I think. And uh, the MLOW Tag Team Champions versus the then Lewis Tag Team Champions, which actually features a wild girl in it, Nina Monet is in that match before she became Siren. Um, but um, in any case. <clears throat> At the end of that, I did put uh, an overlay of links on top of it. Uh, but uh, just publicly, just real quick, I, I, it's going to be a while before I get to all of those videos, if I ever do, because that's like a, a year or two worth of, of videos that have that, that thing on there that the links no longer work. So that that is uh, something I wanted to make sure I publicly address there. I uh, also wanted to address the next thing. This has come from Eric Hoffman, and this came on our Facebook. Uh, a concern of his that he, he doesn't get to show in his area. And I just wanted to make a public ser service announcement for him. The show being Wild Superheroes. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, uh, I, I, I don't get Wild or I don't get Access TV of, through my cable service either. And in fact, I'm not sure if many of the people that I know of get access TV through their cable provider. However, um, if you have internet, which clearly you do, because you uh, have either listened to the podcast, downloaded the podcast, or, or just being on Facebook and social media, if you have if your service is strong enough to stream, then you should be able to get that. Now, I watch it through Sling TV. 
That is how I look at um, uh, uh, WoW. It is uh, on Sling. I've, I've, you can basically uh, customize your package. Uh, it's about 25 a month for the service. But if you're getting um, uh, not a sports pack, it, I, I forget the name of the package, but and the, you, you, they, they, they show a, a lineup of all the channels that you're going to get before you, you you subscribe to it anyway. So, you know, if you are going to utilize that, just make sure that you are getting what you're looking for if you were going to get it for that. I think Filio is another one that may have Access TV. I'm, I'm not – I don't remember – totally but it's another uh streaming service that i that i uh did trial for and i thought it was fine um i don't get anything off of this folks let me let me just make that clear mr green does not get anything for this i'm not pushing sling tv because i get some sort of uh ad revenue or sales revenue off of them or anything like that there, there are no links to <laughs> purchasing sling tv down there i'm not an affiliate of them I'm just saying this as a means to to help this guy out. Um, So if you're looking to watch WoW and you don't have that available to you, then that would probably be the thing that I would suggest. Now, off the record, okay, I'm going to say this clearly, and this is not on record. Yes, it's in a podcast, but, you know, (laughs) but but I would just put that as my disclaimer. Off the record, there are other outlets that you can watch while on. You may not be able to see the entirety of the shows in terms of vignettes and in-betweens and interviews and promos. However, I do know for a fact that it is somebody on YouTube that uploads nearly every single match that takes place every episode of WoW. And if you look around hard enough, you can find it. Not only do they have that, I, I think that there's uh, one that has every single episode of the original WoW. So, <clears throat> but I, I know the original WoW is not what you're concerned about. You're wanting to see the one that's airing on Access TV. And I'm sure uh, that is not something Access TV is wanting pushed. <laughs> I say, which is why I say this is all the record. I mean, you know, it is nothing that I, that I endorse, but I will... Leave your your comment with this to say that if you are searching around hard enough, you will find what you're looking for. I'll leave it at that. And finally, <laughs> I guess that that was my my uh, good deed for the kind of I don't know. Uh, one Mister Callenbeck. Uh, sent in a a question that I'd like to address. Actually, it, when I read it, it's like multiple uh, questions in in one. So let me <clears throat> let me get down here so I can read this. You seem to have interacted with a number of these ladies in wrestling for a while. Some before they were stars. Were there any that you knew? And he's got quotation. She's going to make it, or some not so much. Also, do you think Jungle Girl will ever wrestle outside of WoW? Now, that was why I said I was going to get back to the Jungle Girl thing because of that. All right, so answering the question. Yes, I have interacted with a a number of these girls. You are correct in that assumption. Uh, If you've looked through the Women's Pro Wrestling Network page, especially if you're just looking at the videos from way, you know, from when it started up from uh, 2013 to present day, <clears throat> and I, I have had the opportunity uh, to interact with a number of them on a couple of different occasions, either in interviews or uh, getting the chance to produce the, the match for them or something along that those lines. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, look, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I, like, yeah, I knew so-and-so was going to make it. I, I honestly didn't have a lot of moments like that. I, not because I didn't think they were talented, but I, I I don't remember, aside from one person, and I'll get to who that is in a minute, aside from one person, I don't remember having a lot of, she's going to get there. She's going to, she's going to, now I thought someone were very talented, 
And the better way for me to put it would be she could get there if she gets a break. That that was probably more along the lines of my thought. And there's several people that I that I had that about because I was like, you know, she's really talented. She could get it if she had a break. And that's all she, you know, that's, that's all that some of them were looking for. That's like they just need a break. Uh, Double D Rose is is one of them. She she's extremely dedicated. Like the first person that comes to my mind, anytime somebody asks me about you know booking or you know, hey anybody think I should book on my show, she's almost one of the first people that I would suggest. Extremely professional, and I think she prides herself on being professional. Um, she she's one that you know she she just needs a break. She could do fine. And she was in the in the right place, but she hasn't had that that break yet. Somebody that says, "Hey, let me let me put you on my TV or something along those lines." Uh, Aja Pereira is probably very. She feels like she's on the verge of her breakthrough, uh, assuming that she wants to pursue it. Uh, she's done a lot in a in a relatively short span of time, and I. And I would say, despite the fact that she hasn't been on anybody's regular TV, she's accomplished a lot more than some of the ones that are on TV. She she's wrestled in Mexico and Canada and Japan, uh, across the country. She's you know a a, a, a top attraction in Shine, <clears throat> and and she's viewed as she's become one of the indie darlings out there. So uh, she's another one that was like you know she she could you use a break to kind of get Brooklyn Creed is one that uh, she doesn't give herself enough credit where, you know, I I think, yes, I I would agree that she, she can and she will improve. But sometimes I think that she doesn't view herself in the same platform as some of the other ones when really in, in reality, they all started, you know, the same way. The only difference is Brooklyn started some, some period after them. So she's still in her growth phase. She's still getting it together and and, and uh, becoming who Brooklyn Creed is ultimately meant to become. Uh, but uh, she's another one. Like she, I, I'll tell you this. I mean, it's not really a story, but I'll, I'll give you a scenario here in that Brooklyn Creed and Harlow O'Hara essentially started. They're about the same era, okay. But the difference there is that Brooklyn uh, is—I don't think it's any secret—and I'm not, you know, unveiling anything. She, she's a mom, and so there was a point in time where she had to stop wrestling because of maternity. She, she just had to put it off to the side. Whereas Harlow was able to continue on, and next thing you know, she's wrestling in the Northeast. She's becoming the priestess. She's, you know, on. I pay per view. She wrestled in Ireland, and then she's in on Wow and stuff like that. Whereas you know Brooklyn now has returned in 2018, but she's she's more or less having to start over. She's she's having to start over and reestablish who she is as a wrestler. And you know now, if you were going to ask me when I met them, I would have said Brooklyn was was the the quicker study of the two. Uh, just, just in, I, I could have gone out and I said, Brooklyn, give me a promo on this, that, and the other. And, and 30 seconds later, she would have fired it out for me. Uh, and I love Arlo, but she, she, at that time, she wasn't able to do it. Now, now today, that's a different story because I, she, she's got more experience behind it. But at that, at that point, she, it was, it was far more difficult for her to, to deliver the promo than it was for Brooklyn. And and I thought they both were pretty even Steven in the ring at that at that stage. But, you know, now if we're talking experience in ring wise, Harlow has more experience than her because she's kept going. So all of that to say is that um, I guess in a roundabout way, did I did I know before, you know, like, hey, this person's gonna make it that most of them know. Only person I ever felt like that I that they're going to make it was Kara Hogan. And the reason that I felt like that is because of the interview that I did with her initially. You can go back and you can look at that. I think is the introducing episode one. 
I wouldn't say that about many other people, including the Jordan Grace interview. I did have an interview with her. I didn't see it at the time. I thought she was extremely talented, but I, you know, I didn't see anything overly like, okay, this this is this is the star potential here. Kiara had a certain star factor, and she she had the story. I mean, she she had it. She had the 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 star. I, I don't. I know that you having a story does not endear you to being a star yourself. I I understand that, but. In my mind, as she was telling me this, as I'm interviewing her, and she had, like, you know, the, the photos and whatnot and the video. She's talking about, you know, when I was growing up, I, I wanted to meet Mickey James. She was my idol and this, that, and the other. And then, you know, on her on her YouTube channel, I, she might have taken it down by this point. But on her YouTube channel at the time, she had the footage. She had the footage of her as a fan walking into uh, Impact, um, uh, not a Q&A, what is it, the, the autograph signing sessions. And she meets Mickey James as a fan. She's there, and and you know her friends recording this, and and you know she's getting the autograph from her, and she's getting a picture taken with her, and you know now I'm talking to her, and she's a wrestler, and 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 keep in mind at this point when I'm talking to her, she had already done the WWE tryout. Now I think that came through happenstance somewhat, but she had already done WWE tryout at that point. She had changed her look she was you know starting to really come into her own as as a wrestler um the 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 dominoes were just falling in place for her at that at that stage of the of the game quite frankly um I, i brought up double d rose earlier well double d rose worked in the same promotion as as kira at the time i won't mention the promotion um, but they were both set as, you know, the components of the women's division. And this is when WD Rose was Dementia to Rose. But that division was basically built on the back of Dementia to Rose. Everybody else was kind of, you know, subsidiary to that. Well, you move ahead a little bit, and there is a reason that WD Rose has to leave she, you know, she chooses to depart with, you know, part ways with that promotion, which left an open slot available in that promotion for Kiera to fill, her and Priscilla Kelly. So you add that along to, you know, like I said, the dominoes uh, are kind of opening up for her in that the girl that was positioned as the top, top girl of the promotion had, well, not had to go, but she chose to go, which opened up. A, a line of sight for the other ones, which basically meant that all the top names that came in at this point, now they're facing Kier or they're facing Priscilla Kelly, but mostly Kier. She, you know, before Ruby Riot was in the WWE, Kier Hogan had that match with her. Before uh, Kimberly went in and was Abby Lath, Kier, had, Kier Hogan had a match with her. Uh, Marty Bell, she had a match with her, you know, and, and it, that just kind of went on and on and on. And her having those matches improved her stock. Her having the video of those matches improved her stock. It made her come off as a bigger star. So getting back to the interview segment, when I'm hearing her telling me about her story, what you know, I've wanted this my whole life and Mickey James was my inspiration and I'm seeing the matches that she's having and she and I'm seeing the evolution of her look. And I'm seeing all these things come together in front of my face. That that was the one time I was like, she's going to make it. That was the only person uh, that I felt that about, you know, at at the moment. And and clearly, uh, I I would say that it was pretty accurate. I I would think so. She she got to Impact Wrestling, and and she did that pretty much in record time. She, I think, two years into the business, she was signed. And then next thing you know, while she's on Impact Wrestling, she signs over the WOW. So <laughs> there, there's no reason that she should be working a normal job at this point. She she should be Kira Hogan 24 hours a day. So, yes, that there was uh, th- there was the one. The rest of them kind of, eh. And I don't mean that in that way. That, that came off wrong. The rest of them, I didn't see it because of circumstances surrounding them. Uh, 
I really would. I, I'll give you another little side note. Um, I really wanted to have a sit down interview with some of the girls who were based out of Georgia because some of them, and rightfully so, felt like there were obstacles standing in their way of growth. And they only really got the way to get out of it once they left the state. And that is the absolute truth. Uh, there's a promo that Aja Pereira cut, which is a scathing promo against all Georgia promotions that none of them wanted her until she made a name for herself. Now they all want you know. It was that old back then, you didn't want me, now I'm hot, you all on me. That's exactly what she was going through. And she she cut a promo that she certainly felt in her heart on every Georgia promoter that was here, based on that. So there you have it. So it wasn't that I didn't think any of them uh, were bad or you know untalented or anything like that. I just I just didn't think that the odds were working in their favor. Whereas Kara just happened to come along around the time that a then new promotion was willing to back her up. Uh, you know, I almost forgot about the other one. Uh, was there anybody else? Or he said, or some, not so much. Um, no, I, I, I don't think I can remember anybody. I was like, oh, they're not going to get it. Uh, no, I can't. I, I can't really think of anybody that that sh- strikes me off the top of my head that um that I looked at and said they weren't gonna make it. I mean that that feels almost kind of mean, <laughs> really. Uh, the closest thing I can give you to that, okay? Um, there were there were a couple of wrestlers here where where the business just kind of beat them down. I mean that that's that's the closest I can give you to some that I felt like weren't going to make it. Uh, one I didn't think that was going to make it because she doesn't want to train, and I'm not going to use her name. Uh, but I also don't think that she is looking to make it in the first place. Uh, she she is a a girl that has gotten into the wrestling business untrained. And it is noticeably untrained. Backstage, I think she's now getting to where people are refusing to work with her because they're finding that out. Um, and I, I don't think that she's looking to go beyond just being a weekend warrior, quite quite frankly. So I don't know if that qualifies as somebody that's, uh, uh, did I look at them like, oh, they're not so much. I mean, they're, they're, there's a few of them. That some of them didn't make it past training. Well, they, they they got into the business and or they started training for it. They never went beyond that. Uh, there's and it, and you know I don't know if this really helps you because I can't really give names out because most of these people haven't created a name for themselves. There's one of them that's that I know that's on social media right now that she takes a gang of selfies of herself, but that you know she she claimed to be you know training to wrestle, but you never see anything about that. It's like it, it's always. Let me take a let me take a picture of myself. Let me take another picture of myself. Let me take another picture. She she's got a lot of that, you know. And she she shows her assets, I guess if you want to call it that, in in these these photos. But uh, nothing really wrestling related or how she's going to you know get into the business and stuff like that. It, the wrestling seems secondary, and I and I I think that it's it's hard to do. Uh, if it's a secondary thing, uh, some of the other ones I saw coming to a training school, I don't even remember the girl's name. She came in for about a week or two, and then after that, she just disappeared. I mean, it, there, there's so many uh, uh, people who have got in who will never see the light of day. You know, that, that that's probably the better thing. So for me to look at somebody and say, you know, once they're out in the business that they can't make it I, or, or I thought that they wouldn't I think is a little unfair uh, again and somewhat mean <laughs> for me to say that I I don't think it's my place to be like yeah they're, they're not gonna get it you know not not unless they're just drastically bad and I and fortunately I haven't come across anybody that's been just horribly bad uh, some people who just didn't um, uh, didn't get the breaks or they weren't uh, able to get past training or they found out that it wasn't for them, 
uh, that that probably be the only only other way. And I and I think there was one young lady, and and I, I never met her. So let me let me start off that with 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 this much. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, uh, but she wrestled briefly as Angel. And I never got a chance to talk with her. I never had a chance to do the, the interview with her because I think by the time she was doing that, she um, she had just quit the business altogether. She And next thing I know, she was doing MMA. Um, the, the wrestling business, particularly for, for young ladies, is a very cosmetic business. And I and I think, again, I'm, I'm trying to cover myself here. Um, I think she never got booked like she should have. Like all the other girls around here get booked fairly regularly. They're, they're at least asked. Double D Rose, Aj Pereira, Nina Monet, Priscilla Kelly, uh, Brooklyn Creed, Crystal Rose, so on and so forth. I'm, I know I'm forgetting some. But they all get, you know, they, they get approached, they get asked, you know, they, you know, they present something and they get booked re- regular, relatively regularly. I do not think that Angel at that time got the bookings that she did except for once or twice as a last minute thing like hey we so and so didn't show up can you make it you know that type of thing and that, and again i don't know this to be totally true but you know take it with a grain of salt i think that some of the promoters just overlooked her and with you know why stay in the business if, if i can't get the business to appreciate me so she went to mma uh yeah that was a long answer anyway uh <laughs> The, the the final thing, and then I'll close out with this. Do I think Junk Girl will ever wrestle outside of WOW? That is a really good question, quite frankly. And I don't want to give a cop-out answer and say I don't know, but I don't know. Uh, my gut tells me no. I would love to see her wrestle outside of WOW. I would love to see her do at least one or once or twice, but here's the problem. And I, I say this because I, you know, of the time that I did speak with her, she exists in the wild largely out of loyalty to David McLean. That is why she came back to that promotion some a decade plus later because of Dave because Dave McLean asked her to do it. She did not need to go back to WoW. She wasn't hurting for money. She didn't need a job. She, you know, she wasn't pining to be in the wrestling business. None of those things applied. She went back to WoW because David McClain asked her to come back and resume the role of Jungle Girl. She did that for him because she felt like she owed him. Those are her words. <clears throat> so she never really wrote off the idea of going to another promotion, but she's basically leaned towards saying it's highly unlikely. Like I'm sure if some promoter out there wanted to say book her and they came to her with a, a, with a crazy dollar amount, <laughs> I'm sure she wouldn't just be like, Oh no, I'm not going to do it. She, she'd at least give it some thought if, if the offer was right. If the money was right, she she would probably give it a, just a little bit of mm, you know let me let me think that over. Now she knows that she can't take the Jungle Girl name anywhere, but fortunately for her, she's also wrestled under her own name before. When she when she was on the independent circuit, she wrestled as Erica Porter. And the plus of that is that she doesn't even wear the uh, the Jungle gear anymore. She wears more athletic wear when she goes out there. So it's not like you couldn't. Uh, and I'm talking to promoters right now. It's not like you couldn't get her and just put her in, you know, hey, wear, wear some athletic gear and, you know, do your barefoot thing and come on out here and have a match. It's, it's not like those things couldn't happen. Never mind the fact that WOW is now a sister promotion of sorts, at least network wise, to Impact Wrestling, which a good chunk of that roster already works for. Sassy Massey, Havoc, uh, Kara Hogan. Uh, uh, Tessa Blanchard, they're, they're all Impact Wrestling personnel. And now they they exist on two shows to the same network. So who's to say? I mean, you know, that 
there could potentially, I mean, this is stretching it, but there could potentially be some version of crossover between the two just because they exist in the same network sphere. I know that their they, you know their publicists you know they they don't discriminate they they're like hey when they send me something for one show I get it for all of them I get you know I I, I do wild WoW wrestling but because I had the Women's Wrestling Network but I get the press releases for New Japan and and uh, Impact Wrestling and all that stuff like that because it's all under the same umbrella to them it's all wrestling you know it's all you know pocketed into the same group so if Impact chose to do it, and bear in mind, Impact is the is the is the big brother of the network now because you know Anthem owns majority share and, and access TV, and Anthem owns Impact, so Impact is going to get the the preferential treatment if nothing else. Uh, you know that they they may decide, hey, we want to do a crossover, and, and if and if they leaned in hard enough, I'm sure that. Anthem slash Impact could make it happen if they wanted to. Now, I doubt that they would do that. But I'm just saying that, you know, the, the means and the path is there. And she would probably, she being Junker, would probably be more likely to go to another wrestling promotion that is televised opposed to just some, you know, some promoter that's out there. And, and I say this with all, all due respect to, you know, whatever promoters are out there in the world. She's probably more likely to do that opposed to like doing another independent wrestling promotion unless she knows that promoter first or somebody has vouched for her. Like, yeah, this place is cool. This guy's good. He's really good about paying. You know, the, everything's safe. This, that, and the other. If, if she got that from somebody that, you know, that she knows and, you know, all these things kind of lined up, she may, you know, I, she may give it the time of day. But I think it would take – all of those stars lining up, knowing the promotion, getting paid well by the promotion, uh, uh, maybe being close or them taking care of something. I think I think a lot of things will have to line up. But the idea of her doing what she did, like she's already done that, and and, and, I, and that's basically what I'm getting around to. She's already done that version of in of the indie world. To where I don't think she would want to repeat that version anymore. Where like, hey, I'm getting in a car and I'm gonna drive across the country and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work for twenty five bucks or thirty dollars or whatever the case may be. That no, she's not gonna do that. She's not gonna do it for the for the benefit of hey, I'm just gonna try to get my name out here. She 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 no longer needs that. She like I said, she has a business. She's getting paid from Wow, and I, and I think she's pretty comfortable and happy. With what she's doing. So if anybody is going to offer her a gig as a wrestler at an event or a signing or something like that, that is non-WOW related, they probably would have to come up with a pretty strong pitch package to convince her to do it. So my good answer, no. A long, long way for me to get there, but that, but that's my good answer. All right, and that's it, folks. That That is the, the entirety of the WOW review and a and couple of bonuses that I tossed up in there. If you are uh, so kind, please feel free, if you are listening to this via YouTube, to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get the notifications for when all these things drop. Uh, there are a couple of matches that are being produced right now that I really should go ahead and set the premiere dates for, but... You will know when the premiere days are. If you go ahead and hit the, the subscribe button and the bell, you you get an email, so you won't miss it at all. Uh, if you're listening to this MP3 format through through the traditional podcast, like I said, we are available. What greater podcasts are sold? So uh, t- sold. I didn't mean that. <laughs> what greater podcasts are available? Because you're not buying it. You're getting it for the best price that you could possibly get it for. You're getting it for free. So, yes, where well, greater podcasts are available, you can get it there. And if you don't know that, you can always go on to WPNWrestling.com. The podcasts are available. All you got to do is scroll down. But while you're scrolling down, just bear in mind that we have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week network feed right there on our website. That's right, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the interviews, all our uh, uh, matches, 
and, and some new stuff that goes up there pretty constantly because we are now in the preparation of uh, preparing a Roku channel. So yeah, man, we're, we're, we're joining the streaming revolution. We're trying to provide you another outlet for entertainment, for all this stuff, and your support, your support, either on our website, on the upcoming Roku channel, on this podcast, how you subscribe, all of those things help translate to supporting the ladies that we work with as well. Some people ask me every once in a while, are we going to pl- try to do, uh, are we going to put on a new show, are we going to do this, are we going to do that? That that doesn't happen unless we get support from you guys. It's that simple. Th- those shows that, that I'm asked about are bringing in this person. You should have a match with so-and-so. I mean, I, yes, I, I get it and I agree. I should have a match with Tessa Blanchard on here. I should have a match with Tennille Dashwood. I should have a match with, you know, uh, the, the, the Kimberly returning and so on and so forth. But those things do not happen unless you show your support to the network as it is. So uh, however you choose to do that, you can, you know, we, we're uh, trying to recon- restructure the Patreon uh, setup to, to make it convenient for those that want to do that if you're on pod being there's a donate button uh, you, there, there's lots of ways and and even if you're not doing it monetarily you can always just you know hit the subscribe and help push the numbers because the numbers going up mean that the advertisers pay attention so there we have it folks that is it that those are the rights and the wrongs of pro wrestling at least as it relates to wow And it relates to some of the women that are in the business around it. And if you want your question or comment addressed or mentioned on air next week, be sure to leave your comment below, either uh, somewhere I can find it, either on our YouTube, either on our Facebook. Get a direct message on the Women's Pro Snake on Facebook. You can send a, uh, a message to me directly, Mr. Green75 at hotmail.com. And we'll uh, be sure to address whatever it is that you have available for me. It doesn't necessarily need to be WoW-related, just you know, wrestling-related or my channel-related. We will uh, address that all the same. So just leave what you got, and we will get to it. And remember, folks, the poll is now active. What did you think of the show? What did you think of episode four? Was it great or did it suck? Leave your vote, and we will address that vote next week as well. And as far as this episode of the review is concerned, we are at our end. So for me, this is Mr. Green saying that this is Mr. Green saying we will see you on the next go-round.